Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about wires. To be precise, cheap wires like this one. I want to tell you why they are crap, why do I hate them, how they will ruin your life and what do I use instead of them nowadays. So let's get to it. So let's take a look on this cable. This is pretty much the average Chinese cable or wire that you will get for your Arduino project. You want to get rid of the breadboard or maybe use it for prototyping, but you want to get soldering and stuff like that. And yeah, you will need wires, even if it's for some bodging, like fixing some mistake you have made or, or connecting something. Anyway, at some point you will, prob uh, you will probably need this. So it looks nice, looks colorful, what else? For a beginner, this is like a deal, a huge set of wires that you can use. But uh, let's take a closer look. As you can see, there's almost no copper inside. So this is mostly insulation, and this is the first problem with this. So these are stranded cables. It means that uh, cables, wires, sorry. So it means that the copper inside is not solid copper, but uh, made from tiny strands. And although it makes it flexible, it pretty much also makes it quite fragile. I mean. Yeah, it, it's too easy to cut accidentally when you are uh, stripping the, the wire and whatnot. So, also, um, the thin copper means uh, larger resistance. And um, yeah, there, these are two problems already. Also, the insulation is made from some thick material which is hard to cut with your average beginner Arduino tools. Basically, whenever someone starts uh, going into electronics, the first things he will have is, or she will have is like pliers or something like that, but not a proper cab uh, cable or wire stripper. So this is pretty hard to strip without a cable stripper or wire stripper. Also, let's assume that uh, you have managed to strip it and you will end up with something like this. Yeah, you can see some pieces already um, destroyed during the stripping and the, the whole thing is very, very thin. So this will be problematic to solder too. And or solder it into a protoboard or a PCB or something like that. So once again you cut it, you try to strip it and you probably will end up with something like this again. And even if you manage to strip it perfectly, uh, you will end up um, with a mess of really really thin uh, copper wires that will just really get messy when you try to solder them or, or moreover to push them into some tiny hole on a PCB or something like that. So you will have a hard time and um, even if you thin it with your uh, uh, soldering iron you will still have something that is really easy to to accidentally destroy and, and break pieces, pieces off. So. This is why I pretty much regret buying this. I mean, I tried to solder this to PCBs and, and no, it's, it's no working, basically. It's just, it's just hilarious how, ma how much time you can waste with it. You can use it probably for DuPont cables, maybe for, for some short length DuPont cables, but that's not, what, not the reason I bought it for. 
So I was pretty much stuck with this and uh, I tried to look around and uh, try to find something instead, something that is uh, more solid and yeah, I mean literally not like stranded wire because stranded wires at this thickness they are just way too, way too fragile. So what did I end up with? What have I ended up with? Let me show you. This is Ethernet cable, so it means that it is used for computer networks. And um, this cable has multiple variants, like uh, the nowadays variants that exist on the market are Cat5, Cat5e, Cat6, Cat6a and so on. And um, these are just generations of this cable. And when you get to Cat6, things get interesting because uh, with Cat6 it pretty much becomes common to have some solid wires inside. So with, with uh, older generations there were a lot of uh, uh, stranded versions and as you can see these are also pretty thin and the stranded version of this cable was like the same use case with this cheap Chinese cables. But now with the Cat6 you end up with some solid copper wire there and it's pretty sturdy so you can you can cut it uh, you can bend it and uh, even some people even though some people say that uh, solid copper wires are not really uh, sturdy this one is I mean you can try to break it but it will take quite some time and uh, because of the thin insulation it's really easy to strip even without the proper tool so just carefully there we go and there we go so you see it's really easy to work with and because it's solid it's really easy to solder it into PCBs or, or protoboards and uh, also you can do one more thing with this let me show you so just let uh, clean up a bit more of this and here we go so basically it's just a solid copper wire twisted into pairs and uh, okay just me cut it and then let me strip it really really easy to work with there we go okay and now just let me turn into something this might be familiar to some of you who have worked with breadboards before and yeah so you can see it's so solid that you can actually use it with via uh, I mean you can actually use it in a breadboard like a jumper wire you don't really need to do anything no need for an actual connector or something like that and of course you can just let me show you a project I'm working on so this is probably familiar to those who are watching Great Scott's videos I call it Great Scott style um, let's say PCB but it's not pretty, not PCB obviously it's just a protoboard and um, 
yeah you can see this mess here uh, sometimes it's just really hard to to do this style of soldering properly i mean yeah great great scott and some others do it uh, quite nice quite well i'm not so good at it but instead now i just can do stuff like this and turn it and solder it and yeah that's it now i can do quite complicated circuits on a protoboard because it's insulated and i don't need to uh, care about this mess like here and uh, let me tell you the best thing about this so this cat6 cable is really cheap i mean uh, obviously i don't know let me check how much was this and and how long is this and let's do a quick calculation okay so this is this costed me almost seven dollars and it's five meters and uh, has 12 uh, wires to say so so it means that um, it's like considering a single single wire it's like 60 meters and uh, seven dollars now a cat6 cable has eight wires and um, one meter costs like so anyway uh, this was just a quick video i wanted to show this hint because um because it, it was really helpful for me and i really hope that it's uh, also helpful for other beginners with electronics who don't have the exceptional tools and can't make their own pcbs yet and stuff like that but they are stuck with uh, protoboards and breadboards and whatnot and yeah stuck with cheap crappy wires okay that's what i wanted to sh show you this time thanks for watching this video and see you next time hey thanks for watching this video if you liked it hit like if you want to help my channel and see more of my content hit subscribe if you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me then follow me on social media you can find the links here thank you again and see you next time